what's going on guys? Apple recently had their WWDC 2014 keynote in which they have finally officially announced OS 10.10 Yosemite. Now I've been very excited for Yosemite for quite some time and if you guys streamed in live to Tech Happy Weekly that was actually going on during the keynote then I'm sure you all saw the awesome features that they have lined up for it and me myself personally I cannot wait to get my hands on them and use them on a daily basis. So for all you Hackintosh folks out there this is going to be the video showing you how to install it on your Hackintosh system. But before getting started with the video I have two very important disclaimers. The first one being that this is day one beta software. So this is not ready for prime time. There will be bugs. There will be applications that don't run on it just yet because they haven't been updated. So do yourself a favor and make a backup. I'm on 10.9.2 on the system behind me right now, and not only do I have a time machine backup that's always going that I could always restore from, but I also ran, gave uh, Carbon Copy Cloner a run, and I have that backed up on a whole nother hard drive, so I could boot back into that, reclone it over, and be fine. Uh, the second disclaimer I have is that this is not going to be a comprehensive video for every single Hackintosh system out there because. I hate to say it, but that video just doesn't exist. In the Hackintosh world, there's so many hardware configurations that what I do in this video may not necessarily be what you need to do on your system, unless you maybe have the exact same hardware that I have. So uh, the process of you know actually getting the USB installer ready to go on the USB drive, uh, that should be the same, you know, should, but things could be different. But in terms of actually getting it installed and the kernel extensions that you may need will be totally different from what I may need. So I have to point that out there, say that, you know, this is not a comprehensive guide and that you may have to branch out and do some additional research to get this up and running on your system. Another reason that you definitely want to have a backup handy. So with those two disclaimers out of the way, let's go ahead and proceed with the tutorial. So here we are on my 10.9.2 machine, and really quick before jumping into the actual tutorial, here's just a list of the things that you're going to need. The first thing we're going to need here is an 8GB or higher flash drive or hard drive partition, you know, just something that you can actually install your operating system from. The second thing we're going to need is our copy of Yosemite. I'm not going to show you guys where to get this, you're kind of on your own, the internet's a pretty big place, so you guys are kind of on your own to find that, but trust me, it's out there and available. Uh, next thing we're going to need here is Clover. At the point of this video, and for all we know, this could be changing in the very near future, uh, Clover is the only bootloader that will boot Yosemite at this time, and I'm using revision 2692 for this. Uh, I cannot get any other version to work, so you're going to need this one. Also, I have some kernel extensions here. This is for post-installation, and honestly, I'm not really going to show much of that in this video because it's different for every single system, uh, but these are just some of the kernel extensions that I'm going to need. I actually probably won't even need this. This is just kind of a, you know an emergency kex that if I need it, I'll use it. And also, we're going to need to show the hidden files and folders uh, just to access some files that are in the installer. So I have a nice little utility here called Show Hidden Files that will do that for me. And down below in the description, I'm going to give you guys a link that will contain both of these little utilities here. And so that should make your life a little bit easier so you don't have to go searching the internet for those. So the first thing we're going to want to do to get up and running here is open up Disk Utility. And we're going to get our installation media ready. So once Disk Utility is opened up, I have a little hard drive down here. Or sorry, a flash drive rather. Uh, very you know basic name, Yosemite Installer. I'm going to click Erase. Make sure that it's OS Extended Journal. Erase and Erase. And now once that's been done, I'm just going to leave Disk Utility open and put it off to the side because we will be needing it pretty soon here. And now the next step, we're going to go ahead and right click our installer, show package contents, contents, shared support, and we're going to mount the install esd.dmg. I'm just going to go ahead and skip the verification there. And now right here is where we're going to need to actually show the hidden files and folders. So I'm going to come over here back to my little Yosemite folder. And I'm going to run that little application. We're going to show the special files because I guess apparently they're special. And uh, we're going to mount this base system.dmg. And because this is hidden, you could double click this all day. It's not going to mount. So you're just going to want to right click and click open. And we're going to go ahead and once again skip that little verification there. Shout out to my main man, Eric. Yeah. <laughs> And now once you've opened this up, we're actually just going to close out of this and we're going to bring back our little disk utility window and we're going to highlight our flash drive here, come up to restore and for the source, we're going to come down here to base system, the OS X base system, drag that into source, our Yosemite installer or whatever you guys named it as our destination and we're going to click restore and this should only take about maybe two to three minutes. All right, so now once that's all done, it's going to throw up a bunch of finder windows at you right here. So just to avoid any confusion, I'm going to close out of all these. We're going to close out of Disk Utility because we're done with that. And right now on my desktop, as you can see, I now have two things called the exact same thing, OS X base system. One of these is my installation media, and one of them is the actual OS X base system that we mounted. Now, in order to differentiate these two, 
I've actually changed the way my finder looks on the desktop to show me how much space is left and things like that down below here. So it's very easy to tell that this is my 32 gigabyte flash drive and this is just that base system.dmg file. Now if you're curious about how to do this, just go on the desktop and hit command J. And then this you could just configure right down here, sort by kind. Uh, the one that I'm referring to here, uh, show the item info. And that'll actually you know, put that stuff there for you. I get a ton of questions about that. So uh, that's how you guys do that. And that makes it very easy, once again, to differentiate which one is your flash drive. So uh, moving forward here to avoid any other confusion, I'm going to actually rename this right now to Yosemite Installer. And that makes it very easy to differentiate which one is which. And now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the OS install ESD and right here you have a packages folder. It's a pretty big folder. It's 4.6 gigabytes. So go ahead and hit command C that'll copy it. And now we're going to open up our little Yosemite installer here. And once you're in your installer, you're going to navigate to system installation and right here we're going to see a packages alias. Now on a real Mac, what it's going to do is it's going to hit this and then redirect it to the install ESD in which this packages folder came from. But since we're not going to be doing this on a real Mac, it's going to hit this and have nowhere to go. And therefore, we're not going to have any packages to install. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete the alias and instead replace it with the real deal. Once again, this is a pretty big folder coming in at about 4.6 gigabytes. So this will take a few minutes depending on the speed of your flash drive. All right, now that we have that packages folder all copied over, it's time for a new step that was not in you know, Mountain Lion or Mavericks or any previous version. In order to get this to boot, what we're actually going to have to do is open up the install ESD and uh, make sure that you still have your hidden files shown. We're going to need to copy those two files, the base system.dmg and the base system.chunklist to the root of your installer. I have no idea why this makes it install, but without doing this, it was actually unable to install at all last time I tried this. So make sure you copy those two to the root of your installer drive. All right, so once those two files are copied over, we can go ahead and close out of this. And now our installation drive needs a bootloader. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, we will be using Clover revision 2692. So go ahead and give that a nice double click. We're gonna continue, read through all that very fun stuff. And do not click install here because as you could tell, this is pointed to the drive you're currently installed to. And so, you know, you can go ahead and install this and maybe you'll boot back up just fine, but I would not do that. Just do yourself a favor and click uh, change install location down here and change it to your installer, in my case, Yosemite installer. Click continue and now click customize. You're gonna to wanna to make sure a few things here are checked. I'll go ahead and expand this window a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and drop down this little bootloader. Now I do wanna say this checklist here could differ depending on your hardware configuration. I'm personally on a machine that has a legacy BIOS on it. I'm on my X50, I'm on my X58A UD3R socket 1366 computer. So this is a bit older of a computer. So um, these are the settings that I myself personally need. What you need may be different, but this is a good place to start. And then if you have issues, you can feel free to you know try to tweak these settings to your system. But I installed this one right here, this middle one under bootloader. Under Clover EFI, make sure it's 64-bit SATA. And now under driver 64 UEFI, I'm gonna check this MU variable, OS 10 aptio, and partition DXE. And those are the only things that I'm going to be checking in this video. Now I'm going to come here to install. Put in that extremely secure password of ours. Gets more secure every single day. And after just a few moments, Clover will be installed. Once the Clover installation is done, it can simply be closed and we can move on. And now we have one last thing to do before we can restart the machine and proceed with the installation. What we have to do is get a copy of fake smc.kext onto our installer drive. So there's a few different places you can get this. If you're on an existing Hackintosh, you already have it. Go to your system library extensions folder and it should be right in there. Or you can go ahead and download this from Tony Mac or you know, there's, other, there's plenty of other websites that you could download this kernel extension from. But wherever you get it from, make sure it's as up to date as possible. So I'm simply just going to copy this. We're going to come down here to our Yosemite installer. And what I'm going to do just for the purpose of this video is I'm going to create a new folder called Kexts. Just place it right there. Of course, you have my permission to do so. I'm going to enter that folder and I'm just going to paste it right inside of here. And now that that's done, we're ready to restart the computer. Upon restarting, you'll want to boot from the flash drive you just created, which will bring you to the Clover bootloader. Once you're here, hit the right arrow until you make your way down to the options menu. What we're going to do here is set our kernel flags, which will allow us to get to the Yosemite installer. Two flags that will be required will be dash "-s", as well as kext dev mode equals 1, which allows unsigned kernel extensions, namely fake SMC, to be run. Depending on your system, you may need other flags in addition to these two in order to boot up successfully. After entering those flags, simply hit enter to boot into the installer. Doing so will bring you to this fun message. Before booting up, we need to change the permissions of fake SMC. To do this, first type fsck space dash fy and hit enter. After that finishes, type mount space dash 
uw space slash. Now that we have permission to make changes, we then need to type chmod space dash capital R space 775 space slash kexts slash fake SMC with a capital F SMC dot kext and hit enter. Next up is a similar command chown space dash capital R space root colon wheel space slash kexts slash fake SMC once again capital F SMC dot kext and hit enter. Next up is cp space dash capital R space slash kexts slash fake smc dot kext space slash system slash library slash extensions all of which starting with capital letters and hit enter. This command copies that fake smc kernel extension to a more appropriate location to be loaded at boot up. And now we're ready to load the fake smc kernel extension. Type kext load one word space dash v space slash system slash library slash extensions all of which begin with capital letters slash fake SMC once again capital F SMC dot kext and hit enter. You should receive some similar output noting that the kernel extension was successfully initialized. Once you're to this point type exit and then hit enter which will then bring you to the installer screen. If you don't get to the installer screen you may need additional kernel flags for your system such as graphics enabler. From here continue to format a hard drive and start the installation of Yosemite. This will likely take about 10 to 15 minutes so sit back and have a cup of coffee. After the installation is complete, the machine will then restart, meaning we can move on to the next step. Oh yeah, there's more. What we're going to be doing in this next step is copying that fake smc.kex file from our installer drive onto our new Yosemite installation in order to boot properly. So really quick just to give you guys a better bird's eye view of what we're going to be doing, I'm going to run a quick disk util list and that's going to list us out all the active drives and partitions that are in the system right now. So really quick once again, we're going to be copying fake smc from this guy right here, my actual installer drive up to this drive right here, my Yosemite installation. Now also really quick, I want to say there's three different ways that you guys could go about doing this. The first way being what I'm doing here, I'm actually booted back into my Mavericks installation, which is a really great reason to do your whole Yosemite installation on a different hard drive or partition. The next way is to do it right from the Clover console like we were with the previous commands. And the last way is to boot up all the way into the Yosemite installer and open up a terminal window there and then do these following commands. I also want to say that if you opt to do it my way and use Mavericks, you're going to need to do this as a sudo user. So you can come all the way back up here and do a quick sudo su, put in your password, and now you'll be all set to do this. You will not have to do this from the OS X installer or from the Clover console. Now we're actually going to copy over the file with a single terminal command, which by the way is right down in that description for your convenience in case you ever need it. The command is as follows, cp space dash uppercase r space slash volumes with a capital V slash and then the name of your Yosemite installer drive, which by the way mine is right here, it's called Yosemite installer. And because this has a space in it, if you want to enter it into terminal, it's a bit different. You're going to want to type the first word, backslash, space, the second word. So in my case, Yosemite backslash space installer, slash, kexts, slash, single quote, fake SMC with a capital F SMC dot kext, and single quotation space slash volumes with a capital V slash the name of your Yosemite installation which by the way mine right here Yosemite so I'll just type that slash system slash library slash extensions and after that's all typed out go ahead and hit enter and that means that the file has been copied over successfully so now we can hit exit and restart the computer after restarting the computer and booting from our installer drive once more, it's time to add our kernel flags. I needed to use dash v, kext dev mode equals 1, as well as graphics enabler set to no for my NVIDIA card to get to the operating system. Once again, your kernel flags may vary. With those flags set, I was then able to boot straight on through to Yosemite. It's likely that many features won't be working at this point, including networking, audio, or other things. Post installation to get these things working will depend largely on not only your hardware configuration, but also whether or not Yosemite still supports the same kernel extensions for Mavericks. With that said, Yosemite is definitely looking good. Initial performance of the developer preview seems to be pretty solid with only a small amount of noticeable video lag. With my GTX 760, all three of my displays are up and running, along with all my other hardware being detected. 
Now that you have Yosemite, feel free to install Clover to your hard drive and start getting your system functioning at 100%. If this video helped you out, please let me know by sharing it and slapping that like button. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter, also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here very soon for a lot more Yosemite goodness.